Namaste. Welcome. How helpful are the yoga bandhas or energy locks in promoting our health and wellness in the practice of meditation, especially later on when we deal with energy channeling, you know, preparing for absorption, manage the absorption as it happens, and how to get out of the session or experience safely without inflicting pain damage to our bodies. Now, there are many ways of doing this, but the safest and healthiest for me is when we make use of our energetic systems particularly of the energy locks or the bandhas. So we have three primary bandhas, the Mula Bandha, Udiyana Bandha, and the Chalandara Bandha. And you will develop other subtle ones in the future to assist those three active ones. And one of their many functions is to lessen the power and the potency of the Kundalini energy as we channel her up through the higher reaches of our inner body, from the hips to the inner brain. So as we make its uh, way up, you know, so the intensity becomes less and less and less, until it becomes so subtle you know, to stimulate just enough the inner brain. Right? So the role of the two bottom bandhas, the Mula Bandha and the Udiyana Bandha, you know, is to initiate the filtering process of the Kundalini energy. You know, so the Kundalini energy lingers a long time down the hips. The hips and the um, abdominal cavity, they are quite uh, strong to withstand the pressure, but still be very careful because the, the initial stages of Kundalini awakening is so energizing that we might get caught up with the energy and unknowingly we might inflict pain, damage to our inner bodies, the joints of our hips, which might cause nerve compression, irritation, lower back pain. So the guidance of the teacher is so important. Yeah. And on top of the lessons, physical lessons that the teacher will give you, yeah, the teacher will also prescribe some of the mat observances, spiritual observances you need to accomplish to balance things out. Because later on, as you meditate on the higher regions of your astral system, all the subconscious uh, elements, the karmas, will start to manifest. And with you, you know, accomplishing the spiritual task, the off the mat services, community service, and teaching, you know, so you, you will become more willing to accept you know, the obligations you know, because the realizations will be the same. So you become less attached to the accomplishment of the physical body. That somehow we need to translate the realization to something which is more helpful for the, the community in general. All right. So when we are now ready to lift the energy higher up here, which is so important, the Udiyana Bandha will filter the Kundalini energy even more. So that only the subtle force is allowed to soften the heart, the Anahata Chakra. And then internally we hold the lungs and the vital organs of the heart there. Yeah? So we don't want to overload the, the, the internal organs by sending potent electrical force inside. Otherwise, it could alter the functions of the heart and the lungs, which may affect yeah, the, the functions of the whole of our system, could lead to pressure. Yeah? Whereas it could totally stop the function of your heart as you meditate. And I'm not making this up. I've experienced the ugly side of it. And it's scary. It's dangerous. It could be fatal. Yeah, so by filtering the energy using the, the Udiyana Bandha, the energy which comes from the abdominals and the head region becomes subtle and gentle. Just enough yeah, to nourish this up because there's nothing but beautiful coming from the Anahata Chakra. When the Kundalini energy reaches this point, it becomes a spiritual energy. Yeah, and the lessons that uh, you will be learning, accomplishing from your teacher will become more meaningful. You become more willing to do them. Yeah, so there's no conflict. So what you do outside agrees with what you realize inside. All right, higher up, you know, around the neck, we have the Jalandhara Bandha. And then the Jalandhara Bandha will further refine the Kundalini energy coming from the chest. So only its absolute form, the really tiny one, the seed energy, enters the inner brain to lightly stimulate our inner brain where the soma meets so they blend. That's the reason why it's called Samadhi Union, absorption. When these two forces blend, you experience it. Too much Kundalini energy will burn the nervous system, which renders the meditation process useless. Yeah. 
anatomically, physiologically, it could damage your neurons, it could cause electrical short circuits there, which is not good for the health of your nervous system, could cause psychosis. Right. So meditation is really beautiful, only if we do it carefully and progressively, and side by side with your spiritual observances. Right. And there are people who are who might need more time to prepare. Yeah, so beginners would have to avoid meditation, just focus on the relaxation. If you suffer cardiovascular conditions, talk to your teacher and then just enjoy the relaxation process of it because relaxation is actually the prelude to meditation. You don't have to go as deep as meditation. Once you feel the body has restored, get up all right, and rest it, face the rest of your day. Your children should be spared from doing meditation because they are open energetically and they're so exposed to a premature awakening and we don't want to do that. Yeah, so I truly believe how harsh it may sound, meditation is an adult practice. So how young a practitioner could start meditating? 16 yeah, and above. You know, when it comes to asanas, 12 and above. Yeah. Kids below 12 years old should not do yoga. Yeah, so you may argue it's a good way to build awareness. Yes, I truly believe, but the risks are greater than you know, the benefits. There are other ways. Uh, so kids are so open energetically and they don't have the inner dynamics, the awareness of the body and the inner dynamics and especially the understanding of the spiritual implications it may cause once their uh, subconscious awakens prematurely. It has to wait. Yeah, it has to uh, be tackled when the proper time happens and they have the rest of their lives to do yoga and meditation later on. And so the spiritual services are good preparation instead. And other forms of building awareness by doing outdoor activities, sports. Yeah. And then the bandhas as we age, for example, as we age, um, they close for a good reason. The reason why they're close is that yeah, they prevent the premature awakening. And the kids are too open yeah, to begin with, so we have to avoid teaching them this technique. So even how playful we do them, inevitably as we change the pattern of the body, moving, the breath, yeah, we might awaken the dormant channels inside, which could cause this premature awakening. Yeah, so take your time, wait, talk to your teacher, yeah, if a certain meditation practice suits you or not, because some are, are actually relaxing. Yeah but not too much on the energy channeling side of it. If the calling is there to channel your uh, energy, so I really suggest work on your bandhas and work on your inner systems, the health and the strength of respiratory and the inner core, yeah, the bandhas, they will really help you manage your meditation safely, effectively and sustainable. Yeah. And not just uh, experience the trance, really, not just experience the trance, because the trance is just um, an experience. So what's important is the the connection yeah, between the off-the-mat observances that your teacher will give you, and then it will validate you know, when you meditate, because the realization is it's not us. Yeah? This is just a tool for us to reach out to others. Till the next time. Namaste.